Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Stacey Quinn, the owner of Bossy Glam Works Boutique. And today we are going to be talking about mental health and being a business owner. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about mental health and running a business as a entrepreneur. I want to talk about, you know, when I was working my nine to five, I wanted to be an entrepreneur so badly. Many people have the misunderstanding that, you know, being an entrepreneur, you know, you don't have to answer to anybody. You don't have to clock in, you know, you can kind of do your own thing on your own time. You can kind of march to your own beat. A lot of that is true in a certain sense. However, you are still going to have mental health issues just as when you had a nine to five. So when I had a nine to five, you know, there was bureaucratic bs that i had to deal with all the time you know you got your work snitches you know um making sure that you clock in on time there i think a lot of jobs give you like maybe a three minute window before you're late the last job that i was at if you had more than three late instances in a whole month you were going to be written up and if you get so many write-ups you get fired and all this and all that and so when i was working a nine to five you know i was like i gotta get out of this situation like i was really depressed i felt really bad i felt like you know i went to college i did you know everything that i was raised to do you know husband family kids you know the whole nine career but i was so unhappy with this particular job and I really, you know, I really did beat myself up about where I was at, where I was at in my life. You know, I knew for a fact that I did not want to work for anybody. I didn't like people telling me what to do. Um, I kind of wanted to come and go as I please. So I, I did whatever it took, you know, for me to get out of that situation. Um, I took advantage of an opportunity to work on my business to get it to grow um i made certain sacrifices i invested in mentorships and coaches and things like that and fortunately for me i was able to you know leave my nine to five and become an entrepreneur full time so fast forward to being an entrepreneur i thought it was going to be like this glamorous thing like yes i do get to wake up whenever i want i do not have to answer to anybody in a certain sense, I'm gonna come back to that topic. Um, I do have to answer to people, um, and by people meaning my customers, my vendors, um, creditor, c creditors that lend me money, you know, I still have to answer to these people, most importantly, my customers. Um, so when I wake up in the morning, I always check my emails. You know, I sure I can sit in the bed until like noon, but you know, I, that's just gonna make your workload 10 times more. So the difference between having a nine to five and being an entrepreneur is, you know, when you have a nine to five, you've got that guaranteed money, you've got health insurance and all, you know, this, that, and the third, 401ks and all that, you know, all these great perks and everything. But th what comes with that, you know, as I said before, you've got, I gotta be in, clock in on time or, you know, all this, you've got the work snitches, Oh, you got to go to lunch. And then if you don't come back from lunch at a certain time, then somebody's going to tell on you and all, like all this other shit that you got to deal with, you know, with having a nine to five, it's like being an entrepreneur, you don't have any of those issues, but that does not mean that your stress level is going to be less. You, I like y'all this, I swear. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what I was thinking. Like, I, I just thought that, you know, I just wasn't going to have any type of worries or any of that. Um, but when you're an entrepreneur, you are depending on yourself. If you don't work, you don't eat. Okay. I will say that again. If you don't work, you don't eat. So yeah, sure. You can stay in the bed until like noon or two o'clock, but you still have a business to run. So the hours that you were getting up and going to your nine to five versus, you know, the hours that you are going to sleep in or whatever, like time is money. 
You know, you can be up making content, you know, you got to answer emails, you got to pay invoices, you got to order stuff, you know, you got all this stuff you got to do. Um, like I'll run you through a typical day for me as an entrepreneur. So I try to be in bed by like 10 o'clock, 11 at the latest, so I can get a good night's rest. I'll wake up, I'll have some tea or some coffee, you know, I'll go through my notes, I'll go through my, you know, I have a planner, I'll look at my planner and see exactly what it is I have to do for the day. And I try not to get so involved in my business when I wake up, because once I start working on my business, I can't stop. I'll keep going and going and going and going. And it, it, it gets to a point to where it's like, I have to make myself take breaks. And this could be just like simply walking down the hallway because I'm... <clears throat> I work in my house. I have an office in my home. Um, but just, it could be something simple as you walk into the refrigerator and getting myself a glass of water or going to the bathroom. Going to the bathroom, like things that on your nine to five, you're like, oh, I'll be back, y'all. I'm getting ready to go to the bathroom. But when you're working on your business and you know that time is money and you have things to do, it's like, okay, I'm going to... As soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm going to go get myself water. Like the simple things because it's like, again, time is money. Typical day for me, you know, I would wake up, like I said, I would have my coffee or my tea and I don't try to get too involved in my business because I won't stop. So what I'll do is I have a treadmill here in my house. I will either get up and I'll run or I'll just pick up my car keys and I'll go to the gym where I can actually lift some heavy weights and get like a real good workout in. So if you have a routine and you're consistent, your day will flow a little bit better. So usually, you know, I'll get up, I'll go to the gym or do some type of exercise to where I don't, I don't know what it is about mental health and working out, but if I like run in the morning or if I work out, I get like a really good pump. My mood is really good and I have a really good productive day. No matter how tired and tedious it is, no matter how many different things I have to deal with or how many customer issues, you know, come about, I am ready to take on the day when I work out. So, you know, working out should definitely be a part of your daily regimen as an entrepreneur, for sure. Or even a nine to five, like get up and go to the gym before you go to work. Because I used to do it all the time and it just makes your day go by so much faster, so much smoother, so with less stress. And trust me, I have dealt with some bullshit on my, on my previous nine to five before I became an entrepreneur. So I will come out, I'll, I'll come back from the gym. You know, I'll shower, I'll do what I need to do, eat or whatever. And then I will come in my office and then I'll start working. And I could be in here like all day long. It, it just depends on what needs to be done. But I think the first, the fir the first thing that I do is I check my uh, customer service emails because I need to see, you know, if my customers are having any issues or if they have any questions. I don't like for it to go longer than 24 hours without me responding to my customers. Like I'm all about customer service. I try to be the one to um, keep that line of communication open, which brings me to a, another uh, topic I'll talk I'll speak about really quickly you know I'm talking about boutique owners you know oh you're so lucky you have all this business you know you you make all this money you have all these customers and you know so on and you know whatnot but it's a blessing but it can also be very draining on your mental health so I do anywhere from it just depending on the month I can do anywhere from 40 to sixty thousand dollars a month in sales so that's a lot of orders that i have to get out like more than 500 for sure um so you know you, you have to keep in mind that you've got to fill fulfill all of those orders yourself unless you have hired somebody to you know do these things for you but you have to understand as an entrepreneur and you have nourished something from the label, excuse me, the logo to the website and every you've done everything yourself and you just want to, it's like a baby, you, you know, your company is your baby. It's very hard to let go of the wheel. And if you don't let go of the wheel, it's very hard for you to grow. So with that being said, 
I found that I needed to have an assistant to handle customer issues. Like, you know, yes, you want to be the face of your company. You want to talk to your customers. But sometimes you have to, you know, in certain situations, you have to let go of the will and let other people do things for you. So it was actually a bit of a convenience to hire an assistant to answer my emails or deal with angry customers and things that I had, you know, I was used to dealing with with my nine to five, that can be very stressful. So I found myself answering emails, you know, and it could, it, the number one people are always going to think you're like a scam or whatever, because you're online and so many other, um, scam artists have, you know, just put a bad taste in people's mouths about buying online, you know, um, from people that they don't know. So this is why it's very important to grow your brand and build that trust with your, uh, audience. You know, you have to build that trust and, you know, offer excellent customer service. Dealing with angry customers can really take a toll on your mental health. And I found myself backpedaling into the same situation that I was dealing with at my nine to five, because my nine to five, I dealt with customers on a daily basis. So I was like, I can't, I can't handle this. I have to hire someone to, you know, help me with these emails. Okay, so that that's one thing. And then you think you have that all figured out, but then when you start to get people working for you and they see your business flourishing and they see you doing good, you know, they are going to want to put themselves in a better position like you have done for yourself and your business. And they're going to want to do what you do. Sadly, <laughs> I had to let my uh, assistant go, well, she quit, or I, I, whatever you want to call it. But it just got really ugly. It got really nasty. And I just think for the sake of me being a business owner, you know, the moment that she told me that she wanted to start a boutique, I needed to cut all ties because you have so much access to things that I allowed you to have access to you could I don't know there's just many different things that could snowball and just make things bad for me as a business owner I had to part ways with this person and it wasn't anything personal but I had to protect my brand I had to protect my business so you know when you hire people you have to make sure that there's not going to be any conflict of interest whatsoever and just to make sure that there are not going to be any problems you know, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> that's like a completely different, you know, YouTube topic that I can address. That's a completely different video that I should do on that. But definitely being an entrepreneur, I did not, I, I felt like I would just be able to wake up whenever I wanted to do whatever I wanted to. It's It's really not like that, guys. And I think a lot of people wish they could have their own business so they don't have to answer to anybody. You are going to have to answer to somebody, whether it's somebody that has loaned you money or bank that has loaned you money, your customers, uh, your vendors. Like You are going to have to communicate and talk to people, especially if you're in an e-commerce business. So that's the way I make my money. Like I work for my customers. Like I have to make sure that they have a good quality experience. So, you know, wake up, get coffee, go to the gym, come back, eat, answer emails. And then I go to, uh, shipping. I, I and then I start to ship orders out. Then I've got to get those orders. You know, I've got to take them to the UPS store and get those I've got to take them to the UPS store and drop those orders off. I've got to get the orders ready for my mail lady because she's so nice enough to come and pick up the packages from my home. I, you know, I'll just put a note on the mailbox or put the little thing up, the little flag, and I'll just sit my little thing, my crates out front and she'll just come get them. She'll leave me more crates. Like we've got a good thing going, you know, with this, uh, 
with our interactions and even at the ups store you know they know me now i don't even have to stand in line they're just like hey come on you know come on back behind the counter and just put your packages back there you know i know and i and i've been doing it for so long like i know that they're going to scan all of my packages in ups when the, when the ups driver comes you know my packages are going to go where they need to go so then after that i have to pick up my daughter from school I have to come home. I've got to get a uh, dinner dinner going, like take a full break from my business and take care of my husband and my child. And then once I've taken a break, I come back in the office. I'll finish shipping. I'll answer more emails. I'll order inventory. I also have a sewing blog called Patterns and Peace that I, you know, recently picked back up. Uh, I I've sewn for over six years and that's something that I'm really, really passionate about making my own clothes. Um, you know, I've got thread and patterns and clothes and uh, fabric and stuff back here in the back. Um, so that is honestly my first love. So I'm trying to make more time for that. Um, even if I sew a little bit a day, um, then I have to make sure my daughter's lunch is ready for the next day she's got her vitamins like it is a it's an ongoing thing and i could be in here until <laughs> sometimes two in the morning even though i like to be in bed by nine or ten um so i'm trying to get better with doing that but i wouldn't and then in between all of that you know you got to make sure that you're filming your content for social media and then I have uh, shoot days where I meet with my photographer. Shout out to my best friend, Tashina. She's my photographer slash best friend. Um, I will put her information in the link uh, in the description box below. If you guys are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, if you need family pictures, uh, branding, photo shoots, any, any type of thing like that, like she's your girl. She does really good quality. <clears throat> she does really good quality work. So on the days where you know, I wake up and have my coffee where that gym time is once a week, I have to schedule my photo shoot in that time. And so that's a rest day for me from the gym. I'll go and I'll shoot, you know, my weekly new arrival photos with her. We'll do lunch because we're also very close friends. Um, it, it, it's just, you got to find that balance. You're going to work 10 times harder than you did when you were at your nine to five. So be careful what you ask for and be careful what you wish for. You know, a lot of people think, oh my God, Stacy has it so good. You know, she's making all of this money. She doesn't have to answer to anybody. She doesn't have any worries. Like, y'all, I got worries. I got stress. Just like anybody else. Like, I go through shit too as an entrepreneur. Probably more because everything is riding on me. Bossy glam works depends on me. So if I sit in bed all day and lay you know, in a depressive state, like, sh shit is not going to get done. Shit is not going to get done. I have to get up. This has to work. Now, I will say that it is a lot easier on me that I don't have to worry about waking up and punching a clock or being on time for my shift or, or any of that type of stuff that I had dealt with before. Like, I never want to go back to that. But I will break my back and work myself as hard as I possibly can to make sure that my company is going to be successful, it's going to be profitable, it's going to be flourishing, and all of that good shit that comes along with having a successful business. Um, because the it's so rewarding to know, yes, I'm in my office all day long. And I have to make myself take breaks and stuff like that. But I'm doing it for Bossy Glamworks. I'm not doing it for Kmart. I'm not doing it for Target. I'm not doing it for Walmart. I'm not doing it for AT&T, Starbucks, or whoever the, you know, F, whatever companies that are out there. Like, I am breaking my back for my business. I'm doing it for my family, my legacy. I want to leave something to my daughter and I want to create other streams of income. Like I don't only want to have a boutique. It's just that I have, I, I've got to focus on this one thing and get it going and then move on to something else. One day, hopefully I'll be able to do that. But you know, I have my bad days just as anyone else. You know, I get depressed, I get tired. 
I sometimes I do feel like giving up. You know, every day is not a two or three thousand dollar day in sales. You know, there are some days. Let's see. The worst day I had this month was three hundred and five dollars and twenty eight cents. And let me tell you, that was a bad fucking day for me because I'm used to making on the low end a thousand dollars and up. So every day is not going to be a three thousand dollar day, a two thousand dollar day, a one thousand dollar day. You're going to have days where you only make like a hundred dollars and you're going to feel like it's the end of the fucking world. But guess what? At your nine to five. You know, if you made 60K a year, 50K a year, 40K a year, whatever, 100K a year, you know that that amount is going to be in your paycheck every two weeks at the end of the month or whatever your pay cycle is. But with the entrepreneur lifestyle, your shit going to be like this, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And as fast as the money is coming in, it's going to go out just as fast because you got to keep shit going. You got to order shit. What I got over here? Um. Post-it notes, pens, white out, uh, fucking labels. Like, it, you just got shit that you constantly got to keep up to keep your business functioning. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is entrepreneurship, yes, it does have, it does have, has, has, y'all know what I'm trying to say. It does have, it has its perks. But then at the same time, you're nine to five, it has its perks as well. Because when you clock out, you done. You don't, you, you know, you don't have to worry about that shit until the next day when you go back to work. You can leave all of that if you choose to. You can leave all of that at your desk. And then when you come back, you'll figure the rest of the shit out. Okay. So shout out to anybody that has a nine to five and likes what they do. I'm not like sneak dissing um uh, people that have nine to fives um or entrepreneurs it's just it's it's levels to each situation so if you're on the nine to five side and you're like envying and wishing oh my god i wish i had this fabulous entrepreneur life the first couple of years and this is who i'm talking to like if you've had your business for 10 20 years I'm not even talking to you because your situation is probably completely different from mine and other people. But I've only been open for almost two years. So I'm trying to get past the five-year hump to where, okay, I can sit back and relax. I don't have to really, you know, I'm sure I'm still going to have to worry about, you know, different types of things. But 80% of businesses fail within the first five years. Hell, within the first year. Um, and it was real, that money was coming in real quick and real easy once I learned how to figure out Facebook ads and the algorithm and all, how all that worked. But then Apple came in and was like, well, you know what? Hey, our customers and people that use our products, they are going to have the option to opt out of their data being tracked and things that they're Googling and, and looking for. So your ad does, is not going to show up on their newsfeed, which hurt many of a small business owners because my if my Facebook ads aren't on y'all like I don't make any money I don't have the luxury of having you know over a hundred thousand followers or you know a huge social media and I'm trying to get there hopefully one day I'll be at a point to where I don't have to spend as much on Facebook ads but this is what you have to do to be you know in this situation and get good numbers and, and make a lot of sales, you got to spend a lot of money on advertising. I would say about 30% of my sales go back into Facebook ads. That's the truth. But yeah, Apple, I, I, I hopefully they'll come out with something that, you know, that they can advertise some type of platform to where we can advertise to their customers. Um, I'm an Android, diehard Android fan or whatever, but, um, yeah, so I had to deal with that. And now I wasn't prepared for that. Like I know I did not know, you know, I went from spending a hundred dollars a day on Facebook ads to bringing in 40, 50 K a month, you know, in sales to spending 300 a day to get that same result. So definitely, you know, Facebook ads have gone up quite a bit. Um, and this is what you have to understand, like when you're selling something, any anything e-commerce wise, 
Nobody's going to know who the hell you are in whatever city you're in with all these millions and billions of people in the world. Nobody's going to know what you're doing unless you run an ad. You, you have to, unless you have organically built up your social media following to engage with that particular audience. So building up your clientele, your customer list is very vital to your business as well. And you should not solely depend on Facebook, but I will say, you know, a couple of weeks back, Facebook shut down for, I don't know, like maybe four or five hours. And I had to kick back on my email list. I have thousands of people that have subscribed to my email list, fortunately, and this is from running Facebook ads. People are like, oh, you know, I see her website. I'm not ready to buy from her. I don't trust her. I don't know her yet, but I will subscribe to her newsletter to see how consistent she is. And if, you know, let's just see how, how it goes before I give her my money, which is totally understandable because I am on that same side as a consumer. I had to rely on that email list and say, hey, you know, Facebook's down, but we're not. Hey, come get 30% off today. And I was able to, you know, make my daily goal of my daily goal is a thousand dollars a day. If I don't make at least a thousand dollars, I wouldn't say I'm in trouble, but I need to, ooh, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Um, that's just me being aggressive. Um, of course you, you definitely have to spend money to make money, but I was able to send out a mass email, run a quick little promotion. And I was able to recoup my sales from the day that, you know, the Facebook had went down. So, um, post, 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 social media content, take your camera everywhere, take your, you know, your phone with you, take pictures, videos, get over the shot shit. You know, like if you are an introvert, nobody's really going to care because it's just you. If you're filming the content, you're comfortable with yourself. You're just talking to your phone and then you post it. Like nobody's going to know that you're an introvert. Um, I think for me, I am the opposite way around. Like I am a, an extrovert when I'm out in front of people. I'm like, Hey, you know, how you doing? You know, let's talk Let's, you know, what, what's going on with you girl? How you doing or whatever. And then it's like with social media, I have to work on that because you know, with social media, I am an introvert. So it's a little bit, um, bass backwards for me. But, um, yeah, so I just wanted to hop on real quick and just say, well, that wasn't real quick. That was uh, like 30 minutes, whatever. I hope you guys got, you know, a little bit out of this video, um, as far as entrepreneurship and nine to five and mental health and all that stuff. I still have bad days. You know, there are days when I'm depressed. Like, I feel like I could be better. You know, once you run a six figure company, the next goal is seven figures, seven figures. The next goal is eight figures. So it's like, you're always going to be hungry for more. You're always going to be on the hunt. You want to strive to be better. You know, you see another company and if they're doing better than you, you're going to second guess yourself. You're going to be like, well, damn, why, why am I not doing that? What, what do I need to do to get to where this person is with their business? But you also have to understand that you cannot... You also have to understand that you cannot compare your beginning to someone else's middle. If you start here, you can't be looking up here like what they doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I guess the next goal for me is to build up a, a bigger social media following to where I don't have to spend as much money on Facebook ads. I mean, that's my next goal. But um, wishing you guys all love and light. If you need help with your boutique, you need a strategy, you need your website built, you know, you need to learn how to run Facebook ads, you can reach out to me, bossyglamconsulting.com. I will get you right. <laughs> Until then, guys, wish you guys much success on your business endeavors, and I'll see you guys next time around.